top of the Tuesday morning to you. It is a new year. Welcome to a Terrific Tuesday with Pastor Ken Maxey. I just so happen to be Ken Maxey. So welcome. Glad that you could join us. It is going to be a wonderful day. I know it's gloomy outside, but we have the Lord Jesus Christ. So we always have the sun, right? Am I right? Give me an amen. <laughs> Well, Barbara, Barbara Campbell, first one on here for the new year, and there's Elaine. Thank you guys for um, jumping on here and accompanying me. I hope to see many more of you uh, part of this. Hi, Ruth Baker. It is going to be a great day. I know it's going to be rainy and kind of gloomy, but um, it's still going to be a wonderful day. As my dad would always say, make up your mind before you make up your bed. You're going to have a great day, and it's all about attitude, right? Hi, Bells. Welcome. Hi, Thelma. Thank you so much for joining me here. Uh, I know you guys all have a lot going on, and uh, for you guys to take time to join me, I really appreciate it. Uh, I've got my hair is just going nuts on me. <laughs> a little crazy. Well, hey, speaking of New Year's, how are you guys doing? You guys uh, making any resolutions this year? I don't know that I have officially made any resolutions. But I do, uh, I know that uh, one thing I always try to do or remind myself is to be kinder to people than I was last year. And uh, even, <laughs> so Sunday morning I was driving to work or driving to church and uh, it was early in the morning, of course. And uh, I was a little tired. I was a little tired, even though I got to bed a little, I got to bed at a good time, but uh, I had taken a melatonin and uh, it kind of, Kind of well, had some uh, labor layover effects. So hi Barbara, thank you for joining joining me and Jerry, welcome. And so in the morning I was kind of tired, but somehow I have about I have five traffic lights, six traffic lights between my house and the church. And there is one at uh, 28th and Mitchell. Some of you may have to go through that on your way to anywhere. Hi, Dorothy. Thank you for being a part of this. But if you ever go to uh, Noise and Mitchell, you know that if you're heading south or north on 28th, that um, that light, it's not de it's defaulted for the Mitchell traffic, not the 28th Street traffic. And so you've got to always wait. And some reason I was behind a car early in the morning. Don't know why. It was green and they stopped at the light <laughs> instead of going through it they just literally stopped at a green light so i thought well maybe i need to go around them i started to go around them the brake lights went off then they stopped again <laughs> it was it was it very much trying my patience and my resolution to be kind to others so anyway hey brenda and bill robertson thank you for joining me all the way down there in alabama thank you for being a part of this hi ruth hi ruth uh and Rita and Gina, Jeannie, thank you. Hi, Rita and Jeannie. Always good to see your names pop up. Happy New Year to you all. Hey, you know what they say what New Year's resolutions are, right? New Year's resolutions are in one year and out the other. <laughs> That's what a New Year resolution is. Hi, Marsha. Marsha Williams is joining us. Thank you for being a part of this. Um, also, I was reading um, you know, when you're younger, you're allowed to stay up till midnight, but when you're older, you're forced to stay up till midnight on New Year's Eve. I uh, never really got, um, you know, because the church was the next morning, you need to be in early, I went to bed about an hour early. But what about you guys? Did anybody, did anybody make it till midnight this year? Hopefully you did. They say that the New Year's Eve or New Year's morning parade in Santa Claus are very similar because no one's ever awake to see them. <laughs> I haven't watched a parade in years. Watching from Houston, getting ready for your treatment. Well, Thelma, we're gonna pray for you this morning. So glad you could join us beforehand. Yep, still doing the devotionals. We took last week off. Um, we closed the office down, gave everybody a break, and we're back at it now. You did because you were working. You had to stay up because you were working. Well, God bless you. You know, there are people out there that have to work those late night shifts and uh, many blessings to you for all the time that you guys put in. You guys make the world go around, right? 
You really do. So thank you. Well, hey, uh, we're going to jump into our devotion today. It is, um, we're actually going to look, we're going to go on. We just got done with Joshua. We're going to go on to Judges chapter one. It just seems like the natural thing to do. I love the Old Testament. I don't apologize for that because, you know, the New Testament constantly refer back to the Old Testament. I learn from uh, stories. I do better when I hear a story, an illustration, personal application. So that's why I like the Old Testament. Not that I'm against the New Testament. There are some wonderful things in there. I mean, I'm reading Romans in my personal devotions. I'm reading through Romans uh, right now. And, um, you know, Paul, man, Paul just brings it. It is so, so strong, so amazing what he has to say. And still applicable to, to today, even in the nation of Israel and to us Gentiles. So uh, I, I love the New Testament, but I, I love sharing from the Old Testament. Okay, so we're going to go into Judges 1. Hi, parents. Welcome. Good morning. Glad to see you. Hope you're doing better, Mom. Um, so let me read the first four verses. It says, Now it came about after the death of Joshua that the sons of Israel inquired of the Lord, saying, Who shall go up first for us against the Canaanites to fight, it, fight against them? The Lord said, Judah shall go up. Behold, I have given the land into his hand. Then Judah said to Simeon, his brother, Come up with me into the territory allotted me, that we may fight against the Canaanites, and I in turn will go with you into the territory allotted to you. So Simeon went with him. Verse 4, this is where we end. Judah went up, and the Lord gave the Canaanites and the Perizzites into the hands, and they defeated 10,000 men of Besik. Now it goes on to list them, all the different victories that they had. And so we're going to talk. And there's my brother. Hi, Russ Maxey. Thank you so much for joining us. We're looking at Judges chapter 1, just in case you're joining us late. Um, so anyway, um, welcome to 2023. It's a new year, new ambitions, new anticipations. The only problem is it's not a new you, right? You're still the same old person you were a few days ago when it was 2022. So here we are. So what can you do and what can I do and you might do like a lot of um, like many do this time of year you'll make a resolution you want to make some changes but what's the best way that you can go about doing this now here's the thing the world has a lot of things to offer you the the world has things that can educate and enlighten you it can uh, exercise and enrich you yourself uh, it can it offers things that simply entertain and in, and help you enjoy yourself. But while all those uh, options are not necessarily bad in themselves, they'll often leave you feeling empty. Yeah, you have a sense of uh, of accomplishment, but you know on a deeper level, there needs to be a spiritual a spiritual improvement to have a greater change in your life take place. Because we're not only physical emotional beings, but we are also spiritual beings. And when any one of those different parts of who we are is out of whack, it causes the other two to be out of whack as well. So we need to not only improve our, our physical selves or our emotional and mental selves, but we also need to uh, improve our spiritual selves. And interesting enough, we find some steps in Judges chapter 1. I know that's not a book that most people go to for how to uh, establish your resolutions for the new year. But just hear me out, okay? The first, uh, first four verses, four, five verses, we see that God gives us a plan on how we can improve ourselves spiritually. So in Judges 1.1, 1, 1, we read that after the death of Joshua, the Israelites asked the Lord, Who of us is going to go up first to fight against the Canaanites? Here's the first step in spiritual improvement, is to seek after God's guidance. Seek after God's guidance. That is so important. So the Israelites had no, if you recall, the Israel, the nation, the Hebrews, they had it, Moses as their leader, then he died, and Joshua was right there. It was very apparent that he was going to be the next leader, which is what he did. And he took over, and he led the nation of Israel into the, into the promised land and defeated it all the pagan nations that were in that land until the point where they could rest and they could kind of relax. But unfortunately, there was no clear leader, physical human leader to take over after Joshua. Now, God was clearly the leader of the nation of Israel, but at that point, there was no person 
that the nation could look to. And so what did they do? They sought God's guidance and they went to him and said, who's going to go fight for us? And as we read there, God clearly says that Judah, he instructed Judah. Now, it talks as if Judah was still alive. Now, if Judah was still alive, he would have been about six, 700 years old at that point. <laughs> we know that's not the case. So in your Bible, if it refers, it says that Judah went up and, uh, and, and he asked his brother Simeon, well, what it's saying is that the tribe, the leaders of Judah were asking the leaders of Simeon, the tribe of Simeon to come and help them. And that's what they did. Which brings us to our second point. They uh, looked for support from each other. You know, the enemy that they were about to battle was very stubborn. Yes, they had cleared out a number of pagan nations. Joshua and the Israelites had cleared out a lot of, of the pagan nations that were in the promised land. But there were these pockets of resistance that were spread throughout the, throughout the land that they were very stubborn. They were very much entrenched in the, who, where they were. And it was going to be very difficult to to get rid of those people, uh, those nations out of the pro promised land. And it's very reflective who, of how we are, right? When you first come into a relationship with Jesus Christ, you are shedding all kinds of stuff. You're getting rid of all kinds of bad habits. You're getting rid of this and that and, and all kinds of things that you know that are not glorifying to, to Christ and to God and not helping your walk with, with Christ. But then there's always these few little things that are sprinkled in our lives that are, that are difficult for us to, to get rid of. And we know that the Lord is speaking to us in those areas, what we are observing, what we're doing with our time, how our hobbies, with our money, with our family, uh, uh, sharing our faith. These little things that we fight against the Lord, God is saying we need to take care of those things. But those are the stubborn things that entrench themselves into your life. Here's what we learn from Judges chapter uh, 1, verse 3. It says that uh, Judah went and asked the tribe of Simeon for their help. And that's something that we should learn from each other, that we should not be afraid to ask each other for support, seek support from each other. Genesis 2, 18 reads, and I know this is in the context of Adam, uh, God saying that Adam should not be alone. But it says, the Lord God said, it is not good that man should be alone. It is not good that man should be alone. And, and yes, that's mostly used in the context of marriage. But think about that. In your spiritual walk, it is not good for us to try to take things on our own. I remember Pastor Darrell always talking about the wild kingdom. And I think I've shared on Devotional about how the lion or the, um, the hyenas, they don't attack the whole herd. What they do is they pick off the one that is by itself, usually the young, usually the weak or the tired, they pick that off and then they devour it. And if you are weary and you are tired and you are struggling right now, do not be afraid to ask other people for help. Be, ask for prayer. And if you're wanting to make a change, a, a, a spiritual improvement in your life, don't be afraid to seek after support from other people. Hebrews 10, 24. And 25, let us consider one another in order to stir up love and good works, not forsaking the assembling of ourselves together, but exhorting one another. As the old cliche goes, teamwork makes the dream work, right? So don't be afraid to ask or receive spiritual support. Okay, the last step. So we, we see the first step is seek God's guidance. The other one is uh, seek support from others. And the last step is to stay the course that's laid out before you. We read in verses, uh, later on in verse four through 26, we read how Judah just goes and he, uh, they take out the, the, the nations one after another, just boom, 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 boom. So they have one great victory and then just like dominoes just started falling and they had many more victories. However, if you read in verses 27 through 36, we see that some of the tribes weren't as disciplined as Judah. And, they st and even though they started out strong, they eventually become distracted and they fall away from the Lord. And, and we're going to read about this later, how these tribes fall away from the Lord. But I, I say all this to encourage you to stay the course. And often it's easy uh, to start off really strong, to, to get out of the gate really quick, to have a quick victory. But then you got to remember, hell always fights back. It always fights back. And it's not always going to come at you with uh, might and strength. But sometimes it comes with distractions, it comes with apathy, it comes with fear, 
all these other different things that it may come and attack you and defeat you. So again, seek after God's guidance, seek support from others and stay the course. You know, um, I, I talk about Hebrews 12, one and two all the time. It says that the, that Jesus Christ has, um, if I can remember, I had it written down, but now I don't have it, that Jesus Christ went before us and he blazed, he blazed the way for us. And he is the author and finisher of the race that is set before us. God has set down a specific path, a specific race for you that can give you the greatest fulfillment spiritually ever. And it's up to you to keep your eyes on Christ and to continue to stay on that course. Now, hell is going to try to distract you. Hell is going to try to knock you off of that course. But keep your eyes on Christ. Stay the course. And the Lord will continue to bring victory in your life. Now, it may not feel like it at the time. But if you continue to stay the course, God will give you victory. All right. So, if you're going to be in a time of transition, usually New Year's is that time of transitions, or you're looking to, to, to do some improvements this new year with yourself, remember the three key steps. Seek the Lord for guidance, surround yourself with godly support, and lastly, stay the course. If you can do these three things, you may just have the best year ever, no matter what this world throws at you. And with that, I hope you have a terrific Tuesday. Guys, thank you so much for joining me. I'm going to pray, and uh, we'll let us uh, get going for our, our uh, wonderful Tuesday. Lord, Lord, we come to you uh, today, and we thank you for everyone that is joining me here this morning. We thank you for a new year. I know that our, uh, many are going through so much right now. We think of uh, Thelma as uh, she's even preparing for her treatments, Lord, down in Houston. We pray, Lord, that you would be with her even uh, through this time. We pray against any sickness or any illnesses that... These treatments might bring upon her. I think of Stephen Farr, a young man who uh, uh, only 30 and going through uh, uh, leukemia, and we pray that as he is getting his, as he is getting his treatments, that Lord, that you would not allow any infections to take place, but you would give him strength and encouragement through this time, and we be with his family and his young young kids. Lord, we think of Joe Tracy. I know that uh, he has been battling hard, and yet he continues to give you all the glory. And we thank you for that. We thank you for people who are going through some difficult physical times. And yet, Lord, they continue to give you all the glory and praise. What a wonderful testimony it is to, uh, to us all to see folks uh, continue to trust in you, even when they're facing uh, things that are overwhelming, that uh, are, are threatening to their lives. Lord, we thank you that we have hope in eternity with you. We thank you for that. Lord, I pray for my friends and, and family out there that are dealing with physical issues. I know there are many that are dealing with illnesses and hurt bodies and things like that. We just pray for your healing upon them. Pray for our India missions team. Thank you, Lord, that they received their luggage finally. And I pray that you will help them to do great work there and that many people will come to know you as the Lord and Savior. Lord, we give you all the praise and honor this day. We thank you for all your love, your grace and mercy. And we pray this in Christ's name. Amen. All right, thank you so much for joining me. Really appreciate it. I hope you guys have a terrific Tuesday, and we will see you next week, Lord willing. God bless.